Hey guys, this is Dave from CG Dave Animation, and in this video, we will learn how to create studio lighting renders like this. So let us get started. First, we are going to go to the website where we are going to download our 3D model. This is a really nice website called Dimensiva, and in here we can see that we have different categories to download any of the model. But there are two sections right here. One is paid and one more is free so if you go to the pro version you can click on this pricing you can see that they're offering you a subscription plan for one month and that is 49 euros and you can download all the 3d model that is available in this website for free i have checked some of their models and there are really accurate models if you're trying to purchase some 3d models you can definitely refer to this site but for this tutorial we are going to go for the free section that is right here we click on this so you can see that in the free section also we are getting tons of 3d model available for us to play around so for this particular tutorial i'm going to take this model right here so i'll click on that and they're asking you to register you need to log in to their website to download this so let me just log in because i have already registered it Okay, once you're registered, you can click on the free mod 3 models again and we can download this model right here. Okay, the download has completed. I'll open this and extract to desktop. From here, I'm going to go to the desktop and in this folder, you can see that we will get a bunch of these files which will be having fbx, obj, a corona file and a v-ray file. So for this project we are going to drag and drop the v-ray file to 3ds max viewport like that and say open. So you can see that our model has loaded up with the textures applied. So next thing what we are going to do is we are going to create the studio lighting setup. For that, I'm going to come under this creation panel and in here, I'm going to select the plane. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold on control and I'm going to drag my mouse to create a plane like this. I'll press W. Right now, you cannot see the wireframe of this plane. So I have to turn on this. For this, we have to go for default shading right here. And in here, in display set, display selected, you can select this option called display selected with edge faces. Now you can see that we can see our wireframe. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the size of this plane. So for that, I'm going to come under the modifier tab right here and increase the length and width. Okay, so I think this is enough. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the length segment and the width segment like this. And then I'm going to right click and say convert to editable poly. After we have done that, we are going to go for the edge selection mode and click on this edge and hold on shift and drag this to extrude it like this. And after that, I'm going to select this middle edge like this and chamfer this. I'm going to increase the chamfer amount like this and give two iterations and press OK. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the vertex selection, select these vertices and push this, push this a little bit behind like this so that we can place our lights okay next thing what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a camera to this so for that i'm going to go for the front view like this and in here i'm going to come again to the creation panel and from here i'm going to select the camera icon from here i'm going to go for v-ray and in here you can see v-ray physical camera i'll click on that and i'm going to create a camera press W 
next what we are going to do is we are going to click on this front and say camera and v-ray so right now you cannot see the model for that you should go to this tab right here and say default shading okay now we can see our model next thing what i want to do is i want to adjust my camera settings so before that i am going to increase my 3d model size so i'll click on this press r and i'll increase the size like this and i'm going to rotate this to an angle like this then i'm going to click on the camera and going to come under the modifier tab in here we are going to give a bit of settings for film gate i'm going to give 10 that will of course zoom in the model so we need to zoom it zoom out for that i'm going to come to the perspective view okay and i'll click on the camera like this press w and pull this back then i'm going to go to the front then i'm going to go to the v-ray cam press middle mouse button and drag like this down okay so right now we are not seeing the save frame for this uh, model for this camera so before save frame we are going to go to the settings right here render settings and give a desired resolution so the output size we have we can see that it is very low so for this project you for this project i am going to go for hdtv and select 1920 by 10, 1080 you can give whatever resolution you like so i'll click that and press cancel then i'm going to come click on this v-ray cam and come down and and i will say show safe frame which is also shift f okay this is how the safe frame looks so we can see that our model has been clipped so we have to adjust our, our camera again so i'll so i'll go back to the perspective view select the camera and we can make that like this perfect okay so now we have adjusted our camera so next we are going to place the lights for lights we are going to go for the creation panel again click on the light and in here we are going to click on v-ray and there we are going to click on the v-ray light and we are going to go for the top view like this and create a v-ray like like that and then we are going to bring this up pull this like this and we are going to rotate this to around 65 to 70 degrees remember to press a and turn on the angle snap like that so i'll turn this like that and then i'm going to come on come under the modifier tab from here i'm going to increase the width segment to increase the light and length segment like that okay i'll decrease a bit okay okay so next thing i'm going to create three more lights that is that is right left and front so i'll come so i'll come back to the creation panel and click on the very light and drag like this and take this light and rotate this to 65 degrees like that and i'm going to shift drag to this side and press ok then i'm then i'm going to press e for rotation and in this values we can remove the minus key and press enter so that will flip this next we are going to create the front light so i'll drag this by holding shift and place it like this and rotate this perfect next what we are going to do is we are going to make sure these lights are invisible to the render so for that we are going to select the light come to its properties and here we are going to select on this option box and click on this and 
we have to click this button which is invisible so do it for all the lights okay we are done for this next we are going to go for the V-Ray camera view like this and then we are going to click on the render setup settings okay then from the render option we are going to select V-Ray renderer like that and we are going to lock this perfect then what we are going to do is we are going to come under this vira tab and we are going to click on this start ipr i'll reduce this size i'll drag this like this press f to frame i'll minimize this okay so right now we can see that we need to adjust some of the things so first thing i can see that i need to make my lights a little bit more intense so i'll go back to the perspective view and first thing what i'm going to do is i'm going to you can see that there is a line behind this toy which is more intense so i'm going to fix that first so i'm going to select this light and i'm going to play around with this till we clear that line like till we clear that line I'll pull this to top like that and you can see that line will be invisible okay perfect next I'm going to click on the same light and I'm going to increase the multiplier like that then I'm going to select the next light and again increase the multiplier do it for all the lights guys this is all depends on your preference how much light you required okay okay just play this a little bit so i will i will stop this render right here and i'm going to close this and i'm going to open the render settings again okay so let us play around with the render settings to make make our render look much much better so the first thing where i, where I need to go is this v-ray tab right here so right now you can see that we are at progressive render so which is perfectly fine because we are only because we are only experimenting with the render so progressive is fine for now next thing is progressive image sampler so you can see that it is 100 but if you change it to bucket it is 24 when we are in bucket we need to change it to 6 okay so remember that value but right now we are in progressive but when we switch to bucket it has to be 6 and that is how we will get a fast render so let it be let it be progressive for right now next thing we are going to go for the color mapping right here and this is where your render is going to look very nice so from this we are going to change it to exponential okay so next thing we are going to come under gi brute force is okay because right now we are experimenting but for the final we are going to go for the iridence map okay so let us start the render again so first i'm going to go go to this vray tab and click on the start ipr okay did you did you guys look at the difference right now our render is looking much much better and smooth so right now what we are going to do is we are going to play around with the lights again to make sure the lighting is uh, really nice but before that we are going to go for the material editor and we are going to change the back drop color so i'm going to go to material, material editor and create a vray material and i'm going to select the backdrop and i'm going to assign this material to that then with this diff diffuse value we are going to increase this white value like that okay and press okay next thing what we are going to do is we are going to select the lights and we will start increasing this multiplier again to make sure that our lighting looks very nice so this is all depends on your preference
guys if you are liking this video please go ahead and hit that like button it will help me a lot okay so this is what i am liking right now so i will leave it to here this is looking fine for me for right now so let us do one thing we'll close this render right now and we are we are in the render tab in the render settings and we are going to go for the final render right now so as i told you we are in the v-ray tab from progressive we are going to go for bucket and we have to have that max subdivisions to six which is perfect next we are going to go for the gi tab from brute force we are going to go for evidence map and then another setting what i want to show you guys is from if you open the evidence map menu right here from high we have to go to low and one more thing that i want to add in this setting is i should go to render elements from here i'm going to add the denoiser which is very important so i'll click on this add and click on this denoiser we did denoiser right here and press okay so next we are going to hit the final render button right here and let us wait and see how our render looks okay guys so finally the render has been done and this is how the raw render is looking so you can see that we don't have any noise and the image is looking very sharp right here and right now we can still adjust this render settings so let me show you how we'll do that i'm going to drag this option right here okay next thing what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on this plus icon right here and in here my favorite is filmatic tone map i'll press on that and then what we are going to do is we are going to come on this we are going to come to this type option right here and click on this and we are going to press power curve isn't it really nice you can see that we are getting really nice color tone right here and we can also play around with this settings there is contrast you can play around with this and get your desired look so next i'm going to add a exposure and in the exposure i can expose i can increase the exposure amount like this and if you want to increase the contrast more you can increase this like this okay okay guys so as you can see that we are having a really nice render now let us save our render so file save current channel and we are going to save this as a png and we are going to name it something like final render i'll save this to my desktop and we'll wait and our render has been saved so let us check out check our render okay so we have got our render and the render is looking really nice as you can see and i hope you guys got the same result as me after following this tutorial and one more pro tip that i want to tell you guys is do save this 3ds max file let me show you okay so what i'm saying you is do save this file do save this 3ds max file save as somewhere to a uh, to a folder so that whenever you have your next render whenever you want to do a next render you can just replace this model and you can just have another product render without doing this all the setup again okay guys so thank you for being with me on this tutorial i think this tutorial went a little bit longer than expected but i hope you enjoyed it and if you like this type of content please go ahead and give a like button which will really motivate me to make my next tutorials and do subscribe to this channel so thank you and see you in the next video hey guys this is dave from sij dev animation before you guys leave i just have a small message for you guys that if the video was really helpful then please go ahead and give a like and also do subscribe to our channel so till then stay creative and keep learning